Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a Dell G15 5510 gaming laptop. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to get inside and all the various major components you can access when you're inside. So first thing guys, power down the computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip it over to access our bottom case screws. So you have three screws along this edge, three screws along this edge, and these two on the bottom. After you take those screws out, you're going to take a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because it's going to scratch your case less than a metal pry tool will. You're going to take your pry tool and you're going to put it along the edge, along the seam here, on the bottom case and the rest of your computer. And you're going to slowly pry this bottom case off from the rest of your computer right through here. Um, if you get stuck in a certain area, leave it, go to the other side, continue in the other direction. Um, also, don't put your pry tool too far in. You can damage some internal components, keep it right on the edge. And this bottom case was actually fairly easy to take off compared to other computers. After you get your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, as a general computer repair side note, guys, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, I have it sitting on an anti-static pad. Either that or an anti-static bracelet will go a long way to help you avoid damaging things in your computer when you're working on it. If you guys want any help with tools or supplies like that, as well as any of these replacement or upgrade parts for the Dell G15 5510, there'll be a link above, also below in the description with all the tools that I use, as well as all those replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model. So to get your battery out, guys, there's four screws along the top of the battery that you need to undo. After that, there's your battery plug right here. So with any cable or wire in a computer, I always recommend not to pull on the wire if you have a choice. Manipulate the plug if at all possible. But in this case, I had to kind of do both. So I picked this cable up here. And then I put a pry tool right here. You see that black thing in your computer? It pops up a little bit. I had my pry tool on there and I kind of did both at the same time. I gently pulled down on, on the cable and gently pushed on, on that black part and that got my battery cable out pretty easily. If you want battery information, this battery, this was a Dell part number 8 FCTC, 56 watt hour battery, 11.4 volt. I'll have that information below in the description if you want to look for a replacement battery yourself, but I'll also include a replacement battery in the list of replacement and upgrade parts below in that link that I told you about. As a last side note with this type of repair, if you're here because your computer's not turning on and you're trying to troubleshoot it, it could be your battery, but in most cases, a laptop should still turn on even with a bad battery if it's plugged in. So if you need help troubleshooting why your laptop's not turning on, there'll be a video above, also below in the description. It, it'll be a troubleshooting video on how to address a laptop that's not turning on. You have your stock solid state drive right here under this copper shield. To get that shield off, there's a screw here on top, also a screw here to the left. That will remove this shield on top of your solid state drive. And this is what you're looking at there. So there's a single screw right here that can be removed. I think most of you will have a 512 gigabyte one stock uh, that can slide out of this M2 port right there. Now, in addition to this M2 port right there, there's one on the other side of the computer right here. So you can upgrade and add another solid state drive here, the mirror image here. It, it plugs into the motherboard here in that M.2 port and fastens down here. Now this solid state drive, this is PCIe, uh, NVMe, this can take Gen 3 solid state drives if you guys are looking for your own replacement. Also the Dell part number for the replacement is 0WYTPM. I'll have that information below in the description. I will also have a couple upgrade options for solid state drives there as well. I'll try to have a 500 gigabyte if you're just going for a little upgrade but I'll also have a terabyte and a two terabyte option if you guys really want to upgrade your storage. Little side point, if you do want to extend this for the largest solid state drives, most of you should have an extender bracket, uh, but some of you may not. You may have to purchase it separately. It's okay. It's a very cheap little part. I'll also have that included below in the description in that link 
with all the replacement parts along with the solid state drives. And I guess last thing to shout out, if you guys are upgrading your storage, you probably will need to reinstall the operating system after so your computer can work. Most of them do not come with operating systems installed. If you want help with that, I'll have video links below in the description. One will show you how to install Windows 10. Uh, one will show you how to install Windows 11. Your RAM slots are right here. You have one on top and one on bottom. Many of you stock will only have a RAM stick in this slot on the top. The way that you operate RAM, there's a metal spring-loaded arm on either side of your RAM stick. In order to get the RAM out, you would gently pry those apart from each other. The RAM stick will release. In most cases, it'll even pop up a little bit, and then you can uh, pull it out of that port. To put the RAM stick back in, as you notice, there's a long part here and a short part there. So you can only get the RAM stick in one way, the correct way. Once you've got it in and it's all flush, you press down in the center and these metal arms will latch onto it and secure it in place. Now this is DDR4 RAM. The RAM stick that was in this computer was PC4-3200. Uh, and you do have 32 gigabyte max allotted RAM in this computer. So below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts, I will include a single 16 gigabyte stick if you guys are looking to just upgrade one of your sticks that failed, but I'll also include a 32 gigabyte kit, uh, which would be two 16 gigabyte sticks if you wanna max this out. And I honestly, I always tell people, maxing out your RAM is probably one of the easiest, uh, cheapest ways of maxing out a, a integral part of your speed of your computer. So it, if you're not gonna upgrade anything else, um, maxing out your RAM is always a good idea. These are your speakers, this one to the right of my screen and this one to the left. They're connected by this white wire that runs below the battery and they're connected by that wire. Now these speakers are not screwed down. They're, they just have rubber washers on them. Uh, you can wiggle these right off of those posts that, that they're sitting on and that's how they come out. And this speaker is not plugged into the motherboard. It's tethered to this one and this is the one that plugs into the motherboard right here. So this plug is nice. It's got a grip on either side. So you can use your fingernails or a pry tool and you can get that out of the port right there. So again, as mentioned earlier, that link with all the replacement parts and tools, I'll have some replacement speakers in there if you're looking for that. As a last side note here, if you're having speaker issues or sound issues, it's possible that your speakers are bad and need to be replaced. Uh, most often speakers will blow and then every time the bass kicks in, they'll sound awful. But if you're just having sound issues and you're not seeing sound, it may be a driver or a software issue. Your speakers may be fine. So if you want to troubleshoot that, if that's the situation you're in, I'll have a link above. Also below in the description showing you how to update all your drivers and your software. Hopefully that fixes your sound issues. But again, if you're getting that, that rotten bass sound, then most likely, yeah, your speakers are blown and you've got to replace them. Your Wi-Fi card is right here to the left of my screen above one of your solid state drive M.2 ports and right under your left hand fan. So right here, there's a screw on the left hand side. You take that screw out. It'll release this guard that's over your antenna wire. And then once that's off, you can snap off your antenna wire. Those are just snaps. They just pull up and off of the Wi-Fi card, and then your Wi-Fi card can unplug from this port right here. If you're looking to get at your antenna wire, these will simply then unrun from around your fan, and they'll go up through this hinge assembly right here. And if you wanted the Wi-Fi spec information for that card, this was an Intel AX201 card. Uh, the exact model for this was an AX201 NGW. I will have that information below in the description, and I'll also include a replacement option in that link that, that I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts. As a final side note, if you're having Wi-Fi issues with your computer, it is possible that your Wi-Fi card is bad and needs to be replaced, but it's also possible that it's a driver or software issue. If you guys want help troubleshooting Wi-Fi issues, there'll be a link above also below in the description, it'll be a tutorial showing you how to fix the issue if your computer can't find any Wi-Fi. Now, unfortunately, some of you may know what's about to happen. You can see a fan here, you can see a fan here, but you don't see any heatsink assembly. 
So you may have guessed it. That means the heat sink assembly is on the reverse side of the motherboard. So to get at your fans, to get at your heat sink assembly, your CPU, GPU, um, you have to remove the entire motherboard and flip it over. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. I'll walk you through how to do it. First thing we got to remove is this panel up here. You see these two screws right here. You're going to have to take both of these screws out that hold it to the motherboard. And then we're going to turn the computer so you can see this edge here. On that edge, you have a screw here and a screw here. Two screws on either side of your HDMI port. Those have to come out. After those screws are removed, you can slide this panel up and off, and that will expose more of your heat sink assembly up here. But now we have to completely remove everything on the motherboard. So this right here, this is your solid state drive uh, plugged into your M.2 port stock. If some of you, you may have another solid state drive here. This is a, another upgrade M.2 port. Uh, most of you will have it empty, but you will have to remove this solid state drive. So there's a screw here, a screw here, and this shield comes off, this copper shield. Then this leaves you here, and there's one more screw right there. You remove that screw, you can pull out your solid state drive. Right here is your Wi-Fi card. You need to remove that as well. Again, similar to your uh, solid state drive, there's a single screw right here. You undo that, you take off this guard. Uh, these are your antenna wire that run through your fan here on the outer edge. Those are just snaps. You snap those right up and off of, the, of that Wi-Fi card and the Wi-Fi card can pull out of this port there too. And then we're gonna to need to go around and unplug everything from your motherboard. So we've already unplugged your battery, but you've gotta get these two ribbon cables here, this ribbon cable here. So these ribbon cables, guys, ribbon cables are always kind of a pain. They're very fragile. If you notice, you have a white port there, two white ports here, and there's a black clip holding down the ribbon cable on these. The way that you work these is these black clips open and shut like a book cover. So it opens from this end and, and the hinge end is, is on top. So what you do is you put a flat, very thin pry tool in underneath the clip this way, and then you pop it up and then you can slide the ribbon cable out. I say they're fragile because if you put too much force and you break that black clip, you're probably not gonna find a replacement um, in which case your ribbon cable will never be able to securely fasten. So be very careful with those. This one here too, the black clip is on the reverse side up top. So you're going to pop that up, slide your keyboard ribbon cable out. Uh, your speaker wires plug in here. There's a grip on either side. So you can use your fingernails and slide that out. And your cable comes down here. You may have to pry that up a little bit. Be careful um, because it's, it's still plugged in but you may need to pry it up a little bit because you may have to apply some force on the actual cords to pull it out of, of, of this port. I had kind of a hard time with that. Uh, you can see a little slit there, so you can put a pry tool in there and try to pull that out, but I had to do a combination of pushing on this and pulling on this. Uh, also too, remember your fan wires. This fan plugs into the motherboard right here. Use your pry tool to wiggle that out of, of that plug. Fan wires are very fragile. You definitely don't wanna pull on that. Uh, this fan here plugs in right here, same way, wiggle that out. And then remember, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not, I'm, I'm sorry, when you get your antenna wire off, unrun those from your fan. Unrun those all the way up here, get them as much out of the way as possible. All you're left with at that point is this cable right here, the LCD cable. Your LCD cable will have this black piece of tape that goes around the edge, you're going to peel that up. And then right here, this gold bar, that's your plug. So you're going to take this piece of tape up, this sticker, gently peel it back. If you pull it back too hard, it can tear at this black tape, which can damage your LCD wires. So pull that back just enough to get you access to this gold bar. And then you can take a small pry tool and push on this corner, push on this corner, wiggle that out of, of that port. Now we're gonna go at some screws. You're gonna take these two screws off here, up top near your fans. Take those two screws off. That will release this metal clip. You're gonna take that off. Then you have these two screws under this fan on my left, right here. And on the right fan, you got these two screws right here. And lastly, you have some motherboard screws. This one right here. It'll have an arrow with an M2X4 sign there showing you where that screw is. You'll see another one here on the bottom right corner, and then one last one up here on the top right corner underneath this cable almost.
After all that's done, all those things are unplugged, you can start picking the motherboard up and the heat sink assemblies and fan, you can start picking it up from this end, gently pick it up. You may have to move some cables and wires out of the way, but that releases your motherboard. And then you can flip it over and this is what you're looking at. Now, if you're here to clean your fans out, on each fan you'll see these four small screws. One here, one here, one here, one here. If you remove those, small four screws. Then we're gonna flip the motherboard over to get at this side. And if you'll see here in the top left of this fan, there's a little piece of tape. You're gonna to wanna to gently pry that back. And then there's some tape going over the vent here, pry that back, and then you can get your fan off to clean it. Uh, same with the other side. That's how you would access your fans to clean them. If you wanted to get at your CPU, GPU, heat sink area to reapply thermal paste, you see these four screws here and then these two screws here. So usually you'd have four and four, but these two screws do both. So after taking up these six screws, you'll be able to remove your heat sink and get at that uh, to reapply thermal paste. If you guys are here to reapply thermal paste, there'll be a video link above, also below in the description. It'll be a quick tutorial showing you how to reapply thermal paste correctly. You wanna make sure you clean all the old stuff off. You don't wanna put new paste on top of old paste, and then you don't wanna to put too much new paste down uh, when you're ready to reapply. So again, there'll be a quick tutorial link below in the description. But that's how you would access your heatsink assembly, your fans in this model computer. So that's the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share, subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials, and for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation, and there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app, find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.